Hi, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, and today we're we're gonna drink some seed ray. Yeah. That's that's a new pronunciation. It's it's sweeping the nation. This is cider, cider talk, cider hot talk. cider talk, not so cider. So the setup for this, we have two ciders in front of us. Uh, one is the one that I made in 2014 last year, and then this one is Michael's that he made same year. Same vintage. Same vintage. Right there. Different orchard. Different orchard. So I can still talk a little bit about mine. Mine I bought um, pressed apple juice from, uh, shoot, Ooh. Cider Hill uh, Farms in Amesbury, Massachusetts. And then along with uh, a pound and a half, what are you laughing about so much? When we get to it, I'll get to okay. it. Okay. Yep. I, a pound and a half of honey. <laughs> I, always, I always like to uh, supplement my apple oh. ciders with some, some kind of sugar. Uh, I had a thought about it. I wrote notes as I was drinking this um, last weekend, um, but that's what it's just pressed apple cider. Sorry, pressed apple <coughs> juice. Sorry. Cider is this stuff. We should use that. We're, well, we're using it. Cause, because in America, we've said, ah, it's, it's like, no, cider is this stuff. This is it. Everything else is pressed apple juice. Pressed apple juice. So, pressed apple juice, a pound and a half of honey, and then Nottingham mm. ale yeast. Because I like uh, the English yeast. I've used that a yeah. few years now. I think it leaves in us an, enough residual <coughs> sweetness, but still, still dries out. I mean, uh, you, you take a final gravity reading, and it's, you know, it's point, it's one point zero zero zero. It's, yeah, yeah, it's flatlined there. So, all right, talk to talk to me about this. Your cider. Here. Oh, my cider. Seed so that's why I, I laugh. So where did you get your your pressed juice again? Uh, I believe it was uh, Amesbury Ames Farm, something like that. Yeah, yeah Cider Hill Farms. In I laughed because um, so I got mine from Hannaford Orchards. <laughs> so the grocery store. <laughs> so I got mine at the grocery store. Uh, it was you know pasteurized organic cider. So you know there's no there were no preservatives in it. Yep. Nothing like that. Uh, my recipe was it was basically two gallons of of cider pressed juice. Mm -hmm. And I, in the past, I haven't made too many ciders, but I've had luck with, I like to fortify mine with a little dry malt, malt extract. Yeah, that's right. So it's, so for th this, it's actually a pound of dry malt extract mm. boiled for a little bit in a half gallon of water added to um, two gallons of cider. That's why it's a little darker. Than a little that. darker. Well, it's a little darker too because uh, I believe I primed this. Um, I think the dark, the, the slight dark color is coming from, I primed it with brown sugar. Mm. Just to try to put another level of, level, yeah. level of complexity in there, not knowing what my run-of-the-mill store-bought cider was going to give me. I just trying to put a little complexity into it. So, um, but yeah, so, all right, so what do we think? Tell me what what you think about Okay, so I'll talk about mine. Yeah. Um, then I'll talk about yours. Mm. I think it's okay. I think that my epiphany of what I wrote down in my notes is that um, fortifying with anything but, say, you know, white sugar or something that's yep. going to ferment clean, um, you're going to have some, you know, interesting flavors in at the end. At the at least for me, like I, all the uh, ciders I've made, and I've made, you know, New England <laughs> ciders that are, you know. I mean, the, the starting, raisins. And yeah, the starting gravity is a 1080, and you're yeah. putting all kinds of things. I like this aging on oak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that stuff, and it's 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 interesting and such. But I like this because yeah. it really lets the the agricultural nature of just the cider alone, mm -hmm. the seasonal variability of the apples, kind of just come out on yep. its own. I mean, yep. It's just it's just straight up fermented apple juice, and it's good. I mean, you, you're fortifying it, yes, but. I, without the raisins and the wood and the <laughs> cinnamon and the rabbit in it, no it's cinnamon, just, no cinnamon. You know, lots of rabbit, though. lots of rabbit. It's just I like I like it like this. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. I mean, again, I think that next time I may not use honey. I don't know if I'm digging what the what's what's left there. Um, yours is yours is slightly more acidic than mine, but in a it's super pleasant way. But there's a there's a really nice floral note to it and. That it's got to be the be honey, a, I think. That it's might be beautiful. the honey. It's sure. beautiful. It's got this nice floral finish to it. The apple flavor is nice. It's not like super apple, but the apple flavor is nice. And um, it's got that nice little floral finish. 
It's nice. What was the yeast strain you used on yours? Uh, for me, this SO4, English ale yeast. Ah, uh, okay. It's a standard for me. You use Nottingham, right? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Sort of in the same ballpark. Yeah. I use that. I The reason why I use that is because I like the way it flocculates. Yeah. And it ferments fast. Oh, yeah. Fast fermenter and it flocculates hard. Just like that oatmeal stout so that can, I made, yeah. You, it's a great way of trying to get it a little bit clearer. I, I mean, this is pretty clear. Yours is clearer than mine, I think, but it could be just the way we, uh, you know, pour But I think, bit. yeah, you also are putting, if you're putting a little bit of malt extract in there, I mean, that could yeah, be. I probably picked up a little bit of that. I mean, maybe if I add a little more, um, I almost put a little bit, like maybe three, gra uh, like a gram of like calcium <laughs> chloride or something in there, mm. just because to help the yeast flock out a little more calcium, but... I didn't, yeah. so. I really like this. So you said acidic. I, there's, a, there's a nice tartness to this. It's like biting into, um, um, it's, not like, it's not like a delicious apple. You know, I think mm. that's, we've been mm. all. It's, it's like a ripened apple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's really yeah. a ripened apple. It doesn't have that, yeah. The only, the only detractor for mine, and now it's aged out a little bit from when I first tried it, but the problem with brown sugar, priming with brown sugar, again, uh, I got the brown sugar from the Hannaford sugar Hannaford sugar mills. No, <laughs> from Hannaford's. Um, is that you never know with brown sugar what you're getting? Yeah. If you're getting white sugar that's been colored and flavored with caramel, or if you're actually getting like a genuine pre-white sugar brown sure, sugar, right? Sure. Like a real true brown sugar. And I I feel like it's aged out. But when I first tasted it, there was like a little bit of a weird finish to it and yeah. I can only attribute that to the brown sugar not sure whether or not well but we've talked about you know brewing beer with say molasses or yeah. brown sugar and it you think of all the flavors that are in brown sugar you take out all the sweetness that's what you're left with yeah you know it's yeah, that yeah, true. tarry it's kind yeah. of yeah. earthy taste yeah. and it may not it may not be a good flavor additive yeah. I mean maybe as a note it's fine yeah. but if you have too much of it not so good, but you know some beers, classic styles, are brewed with uh, you know treacle or mm. brown sugar. And you know. yours is more carbonated than mine too. This has been sitting on uh, my the top shelf of my pantry, so <laughs> trying to keep it as warm as possible. Yeah, I pulled mine out of the. I had mine in the the little room where my my furnace is, mm. just to keep it, just to get it to carbonate. It was in there for like three weeks, so it's like seventy plus degrees in there, um, but. I probably could have used more priming sugar. I think it's it's as primed as it's going to get. So yep. it's not in the warm room anymore. So um, I probably I was being I was a little bit cautious with adding my priming sugar. I used a calculator, figuring how much residual CO two there was in there. That I did that whole exercise, and I like you know like my English beers. I like kind of a lower carbonation level, yeah. and I like this. But if I if I could, I'd like to get get it to your level. I think it's just a little more brighter okay. so sure. so that's that's our cider our seed dray video seed dray. you know i don't think that you need to be a beer snob you know uh home brewers we own cider we own mead bjcp bjcp we own um we both own of it. those we own it you know i mean if the wine if the wine people don't want it, we'll take it even though they're probably closer to wine than beer but you know every fall get yourself i mean we had a friend <coughs> Grabbed himself a few gallons of pressed juice. He should be here tasting his right in front of us. He should be here but now. But he's blind now. His didn't come out very good. <laughs> Sad case of alcohol yeah, poisoning. Yeah, it was the wrong yeah. kind. No, his was good. He didn't carbonate it. He just had yeah. like a still cider. It yeah. was nice. But he, he brought it, it over nice. to Jug on New Year's Eve, and we had it, and it was, yeah. it was great. But he didn't, I don't know, he got camera shy. You got camera shy. Someday. We're trying to line up guests. If you want to come on the show, drop us a note. Yeah. We'll invite you. No big deal. And you can drink beer with us on camera. Right. Or a cider if we've got more Cidre. cider. Cidre. Cidre. Sorry. Cidre. All right. All right. For, Let uh, us know about your ciders. Tell us about your ciders if you're brewing ciders. Yeah, you should. You know, don't be a big beer snob about it with your pumpkin. It's fun. It's just something different. It's, just something, it's And it's easy to do. You dump it in and you add yeast to it. And that's it. And that's the thing about mead, too. That's a beautiful thing. Simple. Yeah. It's an, if you can't squeeze in a brew session, like this guy, <laughs> making these types of products is the way to go sometimes, right? Exactly. Although I've got five gallons of wine back there that it's <laughs> probably turned to vinegar by now. Because <laughs> I never stabilize it. We'll see what happens. All right. Anyway. I'm sure it's fine. All right. For John and Mike, brew-use.com. Seeds Rayon. 
Let's mix these and see what happens. Oh, yes. Cheers.